Yeah, I think businesses are experiencing exactly what you've said, that it's not just the right thing to do to hire a veteran, it's the smart thing to do. But beyond that, we want to get our veterans' careers, not just jobs. And that means that the firms need to invest in them. They need to educate, train, and mentor them along the way. And that's what's really important. In fact, next week, uh, KKR and a number of the other large private equity firms uh, are going to be hosting over 400 companies here in uh, New York uh, to discuss lessons learned uh, of the various firms. KKR, for example, has hired nearly 42,000 uh, veterans now with its portfolio companies uh, in America alone. I mean, I would think that when you're in the, the armed forces, there's, I mean, there's privates and there's generals, but everybody's leading, aren't they? I mean, even a private has his peers and he wants to lead for them. And I just, I just think it instills that, those type of, of values that, that are absolutely transferable to, to the business world. No? That, that's right. I mean, they've self-selected as leaders. They've stepped forward to serve this country. Right. And they From want to continue to serve in different ways. They're also incredibly entrepreneurial. They, they know how to make things happen in tough environments. You know, when, when things are rough, you need people who can handle it. And the men and women who served in Iraq and Afghanistan have been doing that for over a decade. Uh, so we're not a charity. We're an investment. You know, you guys talk every day about investment opportunities. This is a generation of people who are an investment opportunity for our country uh, across every industry, across Across every business. And I think that message is getting out there, uh, but on Veterans Day, it's a perfect time to ram it home. And you know, this is America's new greatest generation. In fact, Tom Brokaw is the one that announced that, if you will, after he was with us back in 2003 when I was privileged to command the 101st Airborne Division in northern Iraq, in Mosul, in fact. He spent a day with us, and as he was leaving, he said, surely this is the new greatest generation. That from the man who, of course, wrote the book about the greatest generation, and he's right. You happy about the election? Well, I'm actually nonpartisan, apolitical, it, so didn't get, didn't get the, notes, the system, I guess. The, the system <laughs> has <laughs> worked. Let, let, let me ask you this. You made some comments uh, earlier during the campaign, not directly. You, didn't, you never used the word Donald Trump, but you, you, you were worried a little bit about some of the language that was being used, I think, at the time around Muslims and uh, ISIS and things like that. Do you have any anxiety there? And then, obviously, people who worked with you, Mike Morell and others, were much more direct in their view about Trump. Well, again, I've always been up front. I've worked for Democrats and right. Republicans in the White House. I've advised candidates of, of either party. I continue to do that. Uh, and at, at the end of the day, what has to happen now, in fact, I just finished a piece for the New York Times that will go in this Sunday. And, and my advice is you've got to rebuild the center, rebuild the center on domestic issues and rebuild the center on national security and foreign policy issues. Right. And by the way, this is a political outsider. Who, a deal maker right. who can indeed forge a new uh, coalition, and that's what has to happen. People have to give a little to, to, to get a lot. It, you're to get a lot. Relitigate all of the no, Trump no, no, comments. No, no, no. I was going to go. I was going to go to the, 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 the hot spots there, in there's the There's an world opportunity or... here too, though. You can rebuild around veterans. Right, our country is extremely divided. Supporting veterans might be the right. one thing we can all right. agree on, bring partisan folks together. Uh, and we've launched a campaign this week called Operation Unite America. Veterans Day is just a couple days after the election. Let's right. use this as right. a time to bring folks together of all political backgrounds and, and have them bring us forward. General. This is the other 1%. You know, you all have a lot of 1%ers <laughs> right. at this table. Uh, today we're talking about the 1% of individuals, men and women, who yes, raised sir. their right hand and took right. an oath at a time of war. This is the Iraq and Afghanistan veterans of America that he leads, and they're extraordinary individuals. They knew that they were going to war when they raised their right, right hand, and now they're back. N nearly three million of them have served since 9-11 and then entered the civilian workforce. And now it's about ensuring that we capitalize on the extraordinary attributes and qualities that they bring to the civilian work. God help us if we never... I mean, we need people like that, obviously, to, to protect us and to, and to protect our values. But if we ever don't have guys with that experience in society that I think we talked about Blank Fine earlier, I think he was the guy on the way into the New York Fed during the financial crisis. And the person with him said, I, you know, I think I'm going to throw up. I'm not going to be able to do this. I can't go into the New York Fed. And he goes, you're not in a freaking U-boat. You know, right, storming right, Normandy. Right, right. You're going into the New York Fed. I mean, right. you guys. You refer to Omaha. Right. Yeah, well, yeah, Omaha. Yeah, yeah, you guys. Yeah, you guys. Yeah, Omaha Beach. Yeah, Omaha Beach. You guys have a totally different life, set of skills and life experience that you know. I'm actually. I'm, I don't know if I'm envious because I don't. What would have happened to me? But um, you, you guys are a different breed. You really well, are. They, they're, they're a generation of men and women 
who can handle adversity. And, and we right. saw the World War II generation come home and, and build the middle class and, and really drive our economy because they could get stuff done in, in really trying times. So they're the people you can depend on. And we see it in every sector, in, in finance, in tech, uh, in energy, uh, especially in, in areas of operation, execution. They're people you can count on in a chaotic environment to get things done. And also, they're not just privates. They're also generals and colonels right. and, and strategic leaders who can really help so us in complicated General, times. let me ask you a, a different question, and that is, what, what's the right um, action for the United States from here, um, policemen of the world, or pull back and, and let things, let the chips fall where they Well, this may. is one of the areas I think that uh, the president-elect, uh, when he takes office, is going to have to navigate. We have seen what happens if America is overactive, hyperactive, if you will. And now we've seen We've also they're... seen what happens if America draws back. And there's a fine, narrow line that we have to walk where we do need to provide leadership uh, for the world in a variety of different endeavors without question. Uh, America is the number one economy, the greatest military, still a, a voice that is, is the loudest, if you will, uh, in any given situation. So do, do we enforce a, a no-fly zone in, in Syria? Do we work with the Russians to, to defeat ISIS? How do, we, how do we approach it? Well, again, this is going to be a time to have some strategic dialogue uh, with countries that where we have not had that, where relationships have frayed. There are converging... We tried that with Iran, and I don't there know are if that worked out very well, did it, General? There are converging interests here. There are also some very significant well, diverging interests, and we right. have to go into these with our wide, what would you do with, wide the, open. with the Iran deal? Would you keep uh, it? With Iran, first of all, what I'd do with Iran is uh, the president ought to work with Congress, and of course they, they own it now. This is all Republicans. And the first thing they ought to do is announce a statement of national policy that is that Iran will never be allowed to enrich uranium to weapons grade, period. Now, of course, the Iranians have said they don't want a nuclear weapon, so they shouldn't be concerned about this. And then maintain the capability uh, to ensure that's would the case. Ever, and then also, yeah, let okay, me finish. Go ahead. And then also work with our partners in the region and our ally to counter the malign Iranian influence that is causing such significant challenges. We, the, the, the president thought it was a good idea to, to bring our enemies maybe closer. With, I'm talking about Iran, even though they still say things uh, about, you know, the great Satan and destroying Israel and everything else. Would that not apply to Putin? Do you not bring your enemies closer? Would you ever call him a frenemy? Is it possible for him to be a frenemy of the United States? Well, you're States? talking to a guy that promoted reconciliation at a critical moment in, in Iraq during the surge. By the way, the surge that mattered most is the surge of ideas, a change in strategy, not the surge of forces. Uh -huh. One of the biggest of the big ideas was the fact that you can't kill or capture your way out of an industrial strength insurgency. You've got to reconcile with as many as you can, some of whom have our blood on their hands, and then you go even more. So that would argue for uh, it with yeah, Iran and, and Russia, then, wouldn't it? No, I just think all, all that means is that you should not hesitate uh, to engage in uh, countries that uh, are adversaries in many respects, but certainly have, may have some common interests in other respects. By no. the way, we're going to have to do the same thing with China. Right. We have got this is our number one trading partner now, right. uh, and the two biggest economies in the world. But there clearly is a divergence of interest when it comes to the South China Sea, the East China Sea, uh, a variety of other issues. And we're going to have to figure out how to deal with these. So China, for example, is the key to issues with North Korea. If there are going to be sanctions on North Korea, China is going to have to support them or else they won't work. One of the controversies during the election was when Donald Trump started talking about whether or not the NATO or NATO allies were spending enough of their GDP on their self-defense, which is part of the requirement. Being a member 2 of NATO, two percent of GDP, and uh, and the vast majority do not. Um, is that going to change at any point? Well, I point? hope so. Actually, you know, Secretary Gates. I remember his his valedictory address, if you will, at the North Atlantic Council. I was there as the commander from Afghanistan. Uh, was to say, you're not doing enough, uh, and it went down farther after that. Now, actually, to be fair, it has come back a bit, in part because of Vladimir Putin. I mean the. NATO's new reason for living is because of Russia's aggressive actions in Crimea and Ukraine. And they finally Crimea woke up that, that it would be their continent he would roll across Indeed. instead now, of ours. There's right. still, mm -hmm. still more to be done. And so I think it's, it is not unhelpful to have a president of the United States actually push, push these allies and remind them that we're doing the lion's share here, uh, but we need to make this a coalition that, in which all are contributing to the best of their ability. General Petraeus, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and, uh, Paul Rykoff, thank you. Thank thanks you, for being uh, with us this morning. Great to be and with you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, uh, thanks, thanks for every day. Well, thanks yes. on this Veterans Day in particular. Part of, if, you know, I don't know, as you get older, if I see, like, 
Reagan with the boys of, uh, you know, that... that Normandy. I, I, every time I see it, I mean, I think about it. I, well, I, it's well, just, they'll be, it's they'll be out in communities nationwide today. We want to invite everybody to join us for Veterans Day. Veterans Day is for all Americans. Here in New York, we'll have thousands, and in cities nationwide. Nobody, no veteran should be homeless. No veteran should nope. be... And we need folks to, to get involved. So make every day Veterans Day. Go to IAVA.org if you want to find ways to be involved and help, uh, and, and particularly to focus on the employment issue, which needs that continued focus. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.